Hello everyone and welcome to part 2 of my little masking tutorial. In part 1 I showed you how I create different sets of masks and in this uh, tutorial now I'll show you how I use those, some ways how I apply them while doing adjustment layers in Photoshop and also how I can refine and combine masks. So let's get started. So now with all the masks I created in part 1 of this little tutorial I will show you how I can use and combine them to create certain effects or to get certain selections. <clears throat> let's do some harsh example here. Let's create a curves layer and create a very harsh S-curve, so a very a strong contrast, which I would never do like this, but for demonstration purposes, I think it's okay. So now what we could do before applying such a harsh S curve, we could select the Midtones 2 for example. And now that we create a curves layer, this Midtones selection is automatically applied as mask to this curves layer. And now let's deselect the other curve setting. Let's do a similar strong contrast adjustment here. And now let's compare it. This was without the midtones mask and now with the midtones mask and see how with the midtones the dark areas especially here in the trees and on this side are preserved and also the bright areas those are not affected by this S-curve. The contrast is just applied to the midtones in contrast to this one where we apply it to the complete range. Now let's look at some other options we have. For example, let's say I just want to darken the bright areas in the image. What I would do, I go to the channels and look at the different luminosity masks which I have created. And let's for example select the lights tool which just selects the very bright area, area so control clicking on it. Now when I go to layers again I can click on a curves layer and now I set the mode of this to multiply which basically is, is darkening the image and but it's darkening only the very bright areas so only the lights, if you look at this. But this is now a little bit too much. So what can I do? I can now combine this luminosity mask with a normal mask. What I do, I just press Ctrl G to group this curves layer. And now I put a mask, a black mask onto this curves layer. So I just hold down Alt and now what I can do in this black mask, I can draw with a white brush in like 20% opacity. So I just draw in the effect in areas where I want it. And by this, I basically combine this luminosity mask with a normal mask, which is a very nice technique and I use it quite often. So now let's again look at the luminosity mask which we created for the sky here. Or let's first look at this harsh selection for the sky, this hard selection which we created in the beginning of part one. Control clicking on it selects the sky area. And I'll again use a curves layer to show the effect now. So if I darken it, I go a little bit uh, further than I would normally do. You see it only darkens the sky, but since it's a very hard selection, if I go very close, you see, yeah, it's not looking very good. So here a word of warning. When using such hard selections, you actually shouldn't do two hard adjustments. 
and yeah, go a little yeah, less with the opacity of those adjustments. Or again, grouping this, putting a black mask on the group, and yeah, then for example, drawing in a gradient, just selectively applying it. So now I basically added a gradient to the sky, but because of this mask, this gradient or this darkening here only affects the sky and not the city. So again, this is a way how you can combine those two masks. But be very careful with this hard mask. Let's in contrast look at the sky luminosity we created, which besides the sky also selects parts of the city, but the sky is the part of the image which is mostly selected. So control clicking on it. Now again use a curves layer and I'll do again the darkening. And you see it's doing a quite decent job in applying the darkening to the sky, but not darkening the city too much. And if you now look closely, you see the edges still look very nice. We don't have those ugly artifacts building up. So you get a much more natural result by working with luminosity masks here. So this is a very important takeaway here, I think, to use luminosity masks and to avoid uh, halos or artifacts, which you get if you use hard selections or other ways. That's the benefit of luminosity masks. And you see by using those techniques from part one, you can target those luminosity masks very well to certain areas. And this works very nicely. What I now could do just if you want to quickly do adjustments mostly to the city and not so much to the sky, I could control click here on, or well, let's do it, control click on the sky luminosity, then control shift I invert this mask. And let's say we want to do a photo folder. So warming up the city a bit. So now if you look at this, it mostly selects the city and less of the sky. And if I now warm up the city, I get a nice color contrast. But again, using this luminosity mask, the selection is very well defined, but not too hard. So it's not creating ugly edges in the image. Yeah, so there you have it. Those are some ways to work with luminosity masks. And there are certainly more ways, but yeah, this is now just for you to find out. Play around with your images, use those masks, combine them, yeah, and just experiment. Also, what I want to mention, if you don't want to create those masks yourself, there's a actions panel TK actions panel from Tony Kuiper, which I will link in the description below. And yeah, with this panel, you can directly create luminosity masks. For example, you have those lights and different numbers and you just click on a number, for example, three, and it will create a luminosity mask. I can then create a curves layer and it has automatically applied those lights three. So I don't need to go all the way and create those masks myself. I can just use this panel and this is basically my real workflow, just working with this here. Also, if you want to do those special masks, which I showed in part one, you can still do this by just applying such a layer here to refine your or prepare the luminosity mask and then use Tony's action to create a lights layer and now a curves layer. So you can be very fast here with this action panel. So I hope you liked this video and learned a bit 
and yeah, now just play around with those masks and see how it can improve your workflow.